Back though. Yeah, he said in his acceptance speech that Denzel told him that at your highest moment, be careful. That's when the devil comes for him. I'm the devil. If I'm Chris Rock, I'm the devil that's coming for him. I'm coming up out that purple Tom Ford, a Brioni, or a Caesar Antolina. I don't know who that was, but I'm coming up out of that. I'm coming up out of these clothes, but I don't care nothing about that. Man, you can't do that to somebody, Skip. So now co comedians, can they not say anything, a word about people coming up on stage? That, so don't go, listen, if you're sensitive, don't you take your ass to no comedy show because these are comedians and they make light of situations. So if you go down there and you got on some bull jive, they're going to make fun of you. If you look like some bull jive, they're going to make fun of you. What Chris Rock should have thought about. I say the joke. The person that I say the joke about, her husband. So now I already feel tension. I feel confrontation. Or I'm getting off the first one. Because the moment I feel confrontation, I got to, I got to end it. I'm not going to let you walk up on me like that. We argue, Skip. It, it, we going back and forth. You across the room, and here you come walking towards me. What I think? You coming to offer me a drink? What he should have done is what DC Young Fly did last year when somebody came up on the stage and whipped him. He's protecting his wife. Well, where was her protection of a man when she was at the red table talking about what she was doing with this entanglement? Where was the, her protection of her husband? He a bigger man than me. I ain't that kind. I ain't that big a man. Ain't a road high enough for me to take. So let's see if I could get this one and done um, about proxy violence, send off missions, and mercenaries. Right? Okay. So this is gonna be a ramble. Um, the Will and Jada thing. Everyone's speaking about it, and Mr. Z maintains the internet is going to expose us all or better yet we're going to expose ourselves on the internet there has been a lot of conversation i'm loving it about proxy violence because will didn't just jump on that stage instantly did he he chuckled he looked to his left saw that jada wasn't happy and then he's on the stage going to slap chris rock turns his back with some swagger, walks off, sits in his seat, and, pre and then goes off about, proceeds to curse Chris Rock out. Now, do we understand that look that Jada gave, right? So I'm watching as people talk around proxy violence. Right? Even non-black people, we're all describing it, but not calling it what it is. Right? Proxy violence. Will chuckling initially, at least to Mr. Z, gives me the impression that he wasn't necessarily offended. Now, there are some people that are saying he probably chuckled because, you know, to kind of maybe try to tamp down whatever anger was building in him. That's a possibility. But from what we see, he chuckled. He looked to his left. Jada wasn't happy. Everybody else chuckled in the crowd. Jada wasn't happy. And because Jada wasn't happy, and with all of Will's background of feeling like he hasn't protected the women in his life, from his own words, from his his actual mother to Aunt Viv on the television show on Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, for him feeling that way, now he's on stage slapping Chris Rock for millions of people to see. Now, this opens up a lot of space to have some real conversation about protection, right? About proxy violence, like I said before, about send off missions and about mercenaries. There are lots of women, regardless of race in this instance, but because we're black, we're pr primarily speaking about black people who do use men as walking guard dogs and send men off this is where you get send off mission, right? As mercenaries to go harm other men and on the occasion, maybe other women. This is a form of proxy power, right? Where I don't hit you, I don't get you, I don't kill you, I don't shoot you, but I send someone else to do it, right? I instigate something, I get somebody, someone else riled up to do my bidding. This is something that women have been doing literally for ages, for millennia, right? This is not nothing new or recent, but we're seeing it caught on camera more and more often, right? There's a very thin line between protection and proxy violence, right? 
As a matter of fact, you can argue the way we're seeing protection primarily in the black community is proxy violence. And th you then leave, right? Putting that, that supposed protection out there, administering that supposed protection in the hands of maybe an unstable woman, maybe a delusional woman, maybe a woman that's easily offended, easily riled up. So what does it mean for you as a man to feel like you need to be the protector and yet your wife, your girlfriend, your baby mom, the girl that you like, <laughs> right? The girl that you love, for her to be easily offended. What, what position does that, does that put you in, right? What we saw, what everyone saw was proxy violence. And I know many of us are not going to want to call it that. We're not going to want to describe it as that. But that is what it is. And we're just, we're, we're, we're actually describing it as that. We're just not calling it that. Let me correct myself. We are describing it. And I see many black people kind of dancing around it because we don't want to call it that. Because then we would have to say that women do actually have a form of power. Right? And they use this form of power. So we don't want to call it proxy power. We don't want to call it proxy violence, right? But then we also have to investigate the men who are still standing on their square and saying, protect black women at all costs because they see this as a form of protection. There are certain black documentarians, I won't call their name, hidden colors, <clears throat> Turk, now she's, <clears throat> right? Excuse me. Mm. Certain um, brothers with doctorate degrees that are trying to open schools. Dr. Umar, <coughs> excuse me, god damn. Got a, got a little bit of a cough, you guys, excuse me. Um, that see this as a form of protection. Right? This goes to also another form of protection, placating. <laughs> right? Which we do often in the black community. We placate black women. Oh man, that ego stroking. Right? This is something else we see in the black community. No matter what is going on, no matter what is being said, no matter what is being done, we got to protect black women at all costs, which is used as an excuse to always, always, always. My apologies, everyone. Loud background. Um, lost my train of thought. So moving along. Um, yeah, so this proxy violence that we all see that we're pretty much describing without calling it that this is a form of power we need to call it what it is um this is a issue in the black community especially when we have a certain group of women a certain amount of women that see men as expendable and that this is supposed to be their job right and so this definitely plays a role in this some of our oh that's where i was going the content creators the people that think that we this is a form of protection walking on stage for millions to see and slapping another black man for making one hair joke. Well, she has alopecia and well, he should know better than me. You know what has happened? So many black people, namely black women, feel so offended because of their position in this society, right? The beauty standard, the social position, the economic position. That protecting black women means always, 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 under all circumstances, being willing to do their bidding, whether they're right or wrong, whether they're taking it too seriously or not, whether they're being delusional or not, right? And so, so many black men are like, well, yeah, this is protection. You don't ever talk about a black woman's hair. This man made a G.I. Jane joke. G.I. Jane is a movie that came out in the 90s. This is a movie that came out over 20 years ago. And because of what the, the, the archaic way we see protection. And the poor and working class way we see protection. We thought it was incumbent for a six foot two plus tall black man. To get on stage and slap a what five foot nine, five foot ten tall black man 
one weighing probably 150, 150 pounds, the other one probably weighing 115, one, I mean, excuse me, 215, 220 pounds. The 215, 220 pound man who played a movie about Muhammad Ali, who had to take boxing lessons to play in that movie, slaps the other man. And we call that protection for making one joke. Are we that frail in the black community now? We want to be white that much in the black community now? I said it. That protecting black women means slapping other black men on a national stage for one hair joke? That's what y'all call protection? We're that frail, we're that fragile now. Right? This is proxy violence. And for all of you that get off on a black woman being able to get another black man slapped up off of a look, understand that in the real world out here on the streets, that slap may be responded to with something way more than a slap. And now two black men are gone. And I know for some black people, they're okay with that. Because for them, black men's lives are expendable anyway. Or black men's lives should be expendable. In the air quotes, defense of black women. Emphasis on the air quotes. I understand that there's black people that think this way. But like I said in the beginning, the internet is exposing us all. In this form of proxy violence that anyone in America knows goes on in the black community but it's becoming way more difficult to ignore it, this will be capitalized on in the worst way. The reason why Mr. Z continues to talk about the internet exposing us all, or us ourselves exposing ourselves on the internet, is because I don't think that people really understand what that means in the long run, and how rich white racist capitalists use this against you in your family, in your community. You exposing yourself and all of your weaknesses and all of your frailties and all of your insecurities on a minute by minute basis, on an hour by hour basis, on a day by day basis, on a week by week basis, on a month by month basis, on a year by year basis, allows others to know how to play you and use you against you for their benefit. This is not a good look. So once again, sending people off, sending black men off to do your bidding. It's not, first of all, it's not safe. Secondly, it's reckless. Third, it shows how much you don't value black men's lives. This is how you use mercenaries. You send them to go do your bidding with a little bit of money. I guess with Will, it's not, it's not Jada's money. It's something else. Wink, wink. Right? And it shows how expendable he may be to her. Right? In no way did we see or hear Jada try to stop him. Even when he was going off afterward, in no way did we see her try to calm him down. Do we know what happened after the fact? Of course not. This is a, the outside looking in and everyone is making speculations. So Mr. Z is speculating also. This is still assuming that this wasn't staged. That's a different conversation. So I'll pause right there. Y'all let me know what y'all think. But this was definitely not a good look. You know? If this is what protection looks like whew, in this late date, mind you, in 2022, we, we're no longer an agrarian society. We're no longer living through the times of, of great monarchies. We still got monarchies, but we're not living through that time anymore, right? Of lords and serfs and taking out swords to defend the honor of my lady, my lady, right? And yet we're still thinking of protection in this way. 
viewing men, black men, as essentially being mercenaries. And we're sending them on missions to go harm others, which is a form, form of proxy violence. So I'll end it right there. I'll pause right there. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. Mr. Z out. Sorry for the ramble. But y'all go ahead and let me think what y'all think in the comments. All right, y'all.